Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. This is Jim with Serpentine Dream. Uh, actually, I'm going to be building an incubator. Uh, my one for last season works great, uh, but it probably won't be big enough for what I hope we'll be producing this season. So I picked up this uh, one door cooler. Got it from a local distributor. Um, all the components, the cooling components have been removed. Uh, make it a lot lighter. It's a little banged up. But for the most part, it'll do what I need to do. It has the door that seals really well. And uh, got four shelves for it. It has rollers. And um, it even has a light on the inside. Got a light on the inside of the door, which I just wired up. Confirm that it does work. Also has a nice big fan up top which also works it pulls the air in and then kind of pushes it around the back and down the back side so first thing I want to do is clean this thing out it's a uh, pretty nasty give it a good san sanitize with the uh, pressure sprayer and then uh, once I'm done with that we'll get on to the next part all right she's all cleaned out now give it a good pressure spray not perfect but uh it's a lot better, got a lot of the crap off the bottom. So the next part is going to be all the stuff hanging down underneath, some drain hoses, stuff like that. So I'm gonna remove all that, uh, either try to pull it out, cut it off, do whatever. And um, then I can saw that up with like some spray foam or something like that. So that'd be the next part, getting rid of all that stuff. All right, so the next part is getting rid of all these hoses. Um, I'll try to rip them out, see how that goes. If not, I might have to cut them. Now these hoses are gonna do me any good, so that was easier than I thought it would be. All right, now this one's metal, I'll have to try to break it. I'll try to tuck those away and I'll, I'll cover all that with some uh, foam and it'll seal it back up really good uh, in the front you'll notice uh, there's an outlet at the top so far this works I'm hoping the outlet does because the saw belt plug my herp sat straight into it and I'll have to use one plug in for this whole incubator so we'll uh, we'll see how it goes from there all right we'll be back in a minute all right so the next step I decided to go and remove uh, the center bracket right here just had 10 screws holding it in the back it was to uh, cover up some of the tubing and wiring and stuff that was behind there um, there are a couple holes down here I'll need to seal up I'm gonna remove this copper pipe so I want a, I want a flat back wall uh, to put the heat tape on so I'm gonna pull this pipe out get rid of it I uh, will end up eventually just sealing those holes. I thought about using one of them for the heat tape wire, um, which I might still do. There's actually a nice center hole, drain hole here that goes all the way to the bottom. So I'm also thinking about utilizing it for my uh, probe. All right, here we go. The uh, copper pipe's been removed, and I silicone the uh, screw holes. Some silicone on them just to kind of seal it up a little bit. Plus, some of them are a little bit sharp. I'll kind of take the edge off. And I got two holes back here I can utilize now and the drain plug. So, all right, we're back in a minute. All right, next part is now I got my heat tape. Um, so, I need to get it ready so that I can put it inside of the incubator. There's a few ways you can do it. They make clips that you can buy um, that you can just clip on to the metal strips right here. Um, but I found the most reliable way is just to solder it on. Um, you know, you got a nice connection that generally holds up. You don't have to worry about a loose connection. And there's 
um, you know, you can use a propane torch to kind of warm it up, just scrape the plastic away, or a heat gun, but what I found when you do that is you get a lot of uh, warping. The plastic kind of warps and kind of makes a really bad area. So the best method I found is to use a propane torch. Uh, heat up a screwdriver, and you can just kind of scrape the plastic away without really tearing up the heat tape. Do that a couple times we'll have a nice area that we can actually make a nice solder connection to without warping all the plastic and tearing up the heat tape in the process Alright, I'll finish scraping both these off and then I'll be back. It's a little harder holding the camera, so see you in a minute. Alright, what I'm going to do is I wrap some solder around the wire here. And I'm going to put a bead onto the tape itself. And then we'll meld the two together. I'm no expert at this, but I get by okay, so we'll see how we go here. I got a nice little bead started there. Now we'll take the wire itself, kind of get this started melting. We'll just try to bond the two together. solder on that. Alright, we'll let that set up and then we'll uh, we'll put some silicone on both sides and then we'll install the heat tape. Alright, welcome back everybody. Went ahead and mounted up the heat tape. Uh, basically what we do is measure and then cut it to size. Uh, anywhere you do make a cut, like here and here, those will be live once you plug it in. So make sure you cover those with electrical tape, uh, so you know prevent any shock or anything later on. And same with the whole side. If you do a cut and there's any black still showing, make sure you cover it with electrical tape. There's not at the top. There's a little bit at the bottom. Um, the tape I use is just. A double sided or just a uh, sticky tape it's aluminum foil with adhesive back or you just pull the paper off stick it on uh, it's used for duct work and stuff you can get any any hardware store there's the heat tape installed I went ahead and secured the I decided to go and use both holes in the back of the electrical wires just to make it a little easier keep them separated um, and then the drain plug I'm actually using for the probe. Uh, if you're, keep it separate from the electricity, less chance of interference that way. Um, and I had the hole there, so why not use it? Uh, next step, everything's mounted, taped up, siliconed. Should be good. Uh, fill all the holes in. Use uh, some window and door uh, expansion foam. Uh, if you're going to do stuff like this, make sure you get the window and door. It doesn't expand quite as much. Uh, that way it doesn't tear up your surface or you know some of them will actually warp wood and, and other things because they expand so much so make sure you use the window and door if you're going to do it this way I'm just going to fill the holes with a little bit of the expansion foam really that's all that should be needed so we'll let that set up and cure and uh, that way everything's sealed really well and uh, we'll go on to the next part And everybody, here's the finished incubator. As you can tell, the probe, I just use electric tape and kind of 
attached it to the one of the shelves and all the way down to the bottom. You can see where the expansion foam kind of bubbled up a little bit. Not too bad though. Did the job. And I put my Hertz sat right below. You probably can't see it, but I got it set to 89 degrees, and it's it's staying there perfectly. And with the tubs, the way I got the shelf set up, uh, I can fit 10 tubs per shelf if I stack them. Uh, so I can easily do 40 plus tubs in here. The bottom one I'll probably leave open um, just for airflow. That way the air can circulate. Uh, with a big fan at the top. It's doing a great job at circulating the uh, the air. So far I haven't found any cold spots. They heated up fairly quickly for as large of an area as it is. Now I went and taped up the electric uh, cords back there a little bit. Just kind of get them up out of the way. Anyway, that's about it. If anyone uh, has any questions, feel free to leave some comments below. I'll answer them. Uh, please like and subscribe if this video helped. And uh, have a good day.